So I put out a post on my story asking for JVs and I had five people message back. So within eight hours, I had 75K DMing me. What was it that drew you to rent to rent? Controlling a property without owning it, it gives you a lot of power. Some people are afraid to do business because they're worried of failing. You only fail when you stop. Tell me what deals you've done, how much money you make it. In Cambridge, I've got three apartments, two studios, one two bed. If you're not confident in your business, why would anybody else be? So on average a month, what is your business turning? I'm profiting just under 3K. Pretty much all the cities in the UK can work for SA. How old do you reckon you'll be by the time you're a millionaire? You were one of the young guys to join the academy. You were like That's around right. about 18. I think by the time I joined the academy, I think I just turned 19. Yeah. Or turn 19 during the academy, yeah. And I remember one of your first rent-to-rent -rent calls when we were at the <laughs> program, mm -hmm. and it was terrible. It, it was, was woeful. Oh, shit, yeah. I even it's remember really how bad your, your call was. <laughs> I think, you, what, what did you say when you first rang a landlord? Do you remember? Yeah, it was, it was something along the lines of, I've got an interesting proposition for you or something like yeah, that. Yeah, and they were just like, uh, straight away, check yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. That's another thing as well. When you're selling and property is sales, mm -hmm. I think that people have already decided if they want to do business with you before you even actually tell them the offer. And this has been shown, like when I stopped people in the streets when I was in Hyde Park and I was saying, would you be interested in? And the next line was literally having a free house. And I was trying to give away a free house. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I stopped people in the street, but I was saying, uh, excuse me, sir, would you be interested? And, no, I'm not interested. And it's like, they don't even know what you're about to say. And it's yeah. the same when you're trying to sell joint ventures. You've raised, how much have you raised in the last, in the last 24 hours? Okay, so in the... Last, so I put out a post on my story asking for JVs and the minimum requirement was 15K and I had five people message back. So within about eight hours, I had 75K DMing me. Damn. And now I've just got to- And what are you going to do with through. that 75K? So that's hopefully going to go towards a luxury essay. That's a big place. It's, it's quite cool. Tell me about it. What is it? Sure. So um, I don't want to be too specific because we're still- Oh, because you've not signed the contract. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And as we say, never be at ease <coughs> until you got the keys. Exactly. But it is, it's quite cool. It, it can sleep a lot of people, but it's also got space for corporate events, mm -hmm. which means the occupancy doesn't have to rely on overnight stays. It can also be like daytime bookings. Which will hopefully hopefully boost up the occupancy rate. What's a what's a daytime booking? Well, if a business needs a space to do certain events, because sometimes they do social events, sometimes it is specific corporate stuff. Right. They can either use the garden area or we turn the downstairs area into a space where you can fit 10, 15, 20 people and do corporate events. Right. So it's like a, a rent to rent. Mm -hmm. but it's more a commercial type of well it, it's not it's not just that so it'll have the commercial aspect but then it'll also be your normal essay yeah yeah like a like a mini hotel yeah exactly love that bro yeah. fist bump for that brother so Sorry. tell me tell me about what was it that made you get into property because you're quite mm -hmm. young when we first met you at 18 um what was it that gave you that sure. desire to get into property so i did my a levels during covid and it was awful it was, it was really bad. Obviously, it was hard on the teachers because they can teach properly, but I was just not clicking with college anymore. So my, my grades dropped and everything. But by that point, I was already looking into like trading, other investing stocks and all that. And obviously, you go down certain rabbit holes on YouTube and see your videos. I just started looking at property and I watched enough videos to decide that that's the best route for me did some other training and then jumped on your training. And what would you say? Because when I started mm -hmm. out, I was a similar age to you. Yeah. And for me, everyone was like, what are you doing? Yeah. But I don't know if the culture's changed slightly because of like Gary Vaynerchuk and you're, from, from your face expressions, no. <laughs> no. But like, <laughs> has the culture changed a little bit? Are people more accepting now to entrepreneurship? <clears throat> and like, is it kind of almost cool to be an entrepreneur? It certainly wasn't when I started. Or did you get the same kind of brick wall from your family and friends that I got? I think now, if you, if you talk now, it is cool, cool thing to do. Because I think the hustle culture, the side hustle culture, that's really picked up a lot. But at that time, I didn't have much support. I think pe people are thinking like, what are you doing? Yeah. It's a bit weird. Who, who said that? Everyone. <laughs> really? Everyone, yeah. For family and friends, they weren't, 
they weren't particularly supportive at the start, but I kind of, in a way, don't blame them because you're scared of what you don't know. And for them, they just didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. And people can say they understand, like older people, can understand say they understand property, but rent to rent is a pretty modern property investment strategy, which for the older generations, they just don't, I don't understand. Were your parents yeah. skeptical? Yeah, yeah, 100%. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, you, totally. Were you living with them? Do you live with yeah, them? Yeah, yeah, I still live with them. Are you still, are still yeah. like, again, same as me? Yeah. I lived at home until I was like 20. Mm -hmm. I live with my mom. Yeah. I, again, it's like when you're living at home and you're a teenager and you're going out on viewings and looking at buying <laughs> hotels. Yeah. You know, th there's also, sometimes you can yeah. feel, you know, the, um, the talk about imposter syndrome, mm -hmm. where it's like, am I really qualified to do this? Did you have any of that? Do you have any of that? Now are I you an don't. imposter? No. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Now because I've proven myself to myself right. and other people, I know I'm on it. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I know I'm about it, so I don't have imposter syndrome. But at the start, there was a lot of skepticism, and I think it was seen more as just a little project or hobby rather than actual right. business. Like, oh, bless him. He's doing this little thing on the side yeah. of his college. Yeah, yeah. Um, and which is understandable because it's not serious until it gets serious, isn't it? Is it serious now? Oh, 100%. Tell me what deals you've done and how much money you're making, if you sure. don't mind. So I've got, in Cambridge, I've got three apartments, two studios, one two bed. The two bed I've just got. It's really cool. It's got a hot tub and an arcade machine. I know. Oh, yeah. Nice. All about the USP. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. going cool. I've just got a 21 night booking for it. The day it went live, I think the following day, I got two bookings, which totaled 6K. So on average a month, what is your business turning? Right now, 16K ish. Okay. 16 Six, grand. 16, 18. On average. 16, yeah. 18 grand. And what <clears throat> of that is your, what of that's profit? So I'm profiting just under 3k okay cool yeah. so that's like a full-time salary were you working before or were you just at college <laughs> yeah i was i was working at iceland and i didn't enjoy it i remember yeah, yeah, yeah. you i remember and you were saying to me like i have to get out of this yeah. but see by that time i had my first essay pseudo essay yeah so i was i was itching to get more and i i got a rent to hmo which unfortunately i lost it because of techie issues but i was I, I was itching to get out and just do it full time because mm -hmm. i already had a couple deals at that point but yeah it was probably the environment more than anything because I, I wasn't surrounded by people who were on the same path great people still mates with a lot of them but they just weren't business mindset which didn't really give me much to how do you break into a new environment of people that get it that are on the same path how do you break into that the first thing for people with i'd say no experience social media all the way because mm -hmm. the how many billions of people are on instagram right there's so much content on youtube before you even talk to people face to face just clue up on stuff online because mm -hmm. i like i always say the first education you you should do for business is youtube university right so much content yeah like listening Sorry. to this podcast Literally. and getting clued up on the lingo and understanding what a rent to rent is and how to speak to landlords and then when you are in the right room and you are in front of landlords and you are in front of investors <clears throat> you're able to kind of hold your own at least in a conversation 100 percent. and so clue yourself up on youtube and then if you're trying to go into a space just message people on instagram like i sound like an influencer right now but i get quite a lot of dms um from property people and from non-property people talking about business and i'm always happy to answer and help people and that's the same with a lot of others as well before you go to networking events which are brilliant which are key very important just talk to people on instagram like all their pictures like their stories because i i recognize people who are constantly liking my stuff and that means in person I'd be like, oh yeah, that's him. And I'll go chat to him. And mm -hmm. then I'll I'll be much happier to give him my value, my time, because I see him liking my stories all the time. What was the um, first event you ever went to where you were like, okay, I'm, I get it, it's clicking in place? <clears throat> the first event I went to, it was an online pin event in Cambridge. And I remember... I was definitely the youngest person because I was 18 at the time. I was the youngest person. And I said that. I was... I was like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm 18, I want, I want to get into property. And then people are like, oh, that's awesome. They're really supportive. And 
I remember asking, so how do I find property deals? <laughs> and everyone just started laughing because obviously like that's the obvious question. That's what everyone wants to know. But I'd say just networking events are so good. Basically just like an in-person supermarket, you know, it, in the sense where you have sources, you'll have management companies, you have people with money. If you talk to the right people, you can get everything you need. So talk market. me through then mm -hmm. how you got, your first deal, like how did you go, as I say, from this kid asking silly questions <laughs> on online networking events, on Zoom, yep. watching videos, how did you go from that to a professional property investor? I was on spare room calling landlords and spare room, I don't think it's the best one for SA because obviously it's spare rooms, so it's mainly for HMOs, but there was a studio apartment on it and I just called up and I was like, hi, blah, blah, blah. I did, did my spiel. One thing I made sure to do was not sound like a salesperson because mm, yeah. on earlier when you mentioned my first call that you, that you remembered, which was really bad, I sounded like a salesperson. Right. I was like, hi, it's Ben here. Like, you know, s yeah. s sounding like I'm, yeah. I'm an insurance company. Right. Don't do that. Yeah. Because that instantly shows that you're trying to sell to someone. Like selling is in the words, but it's in the tone mm -hmm. and how you present yourself. So I didn't sound like a salesperson. I did my spiel and he liked it. He actually had a rent rent company before who had to stop because of COVID, which completely stopped their business. So he was happy for me to, to come on board. And you agreed what to rent the property? Yeah. Talk to me as well. I was going to say to you, mm -hmm. like if you were explaining the concept, the yep. business of rent to rent, mm -hmm. which is what you've, you've been quite successful at as well as other stuff. How would you summarize it to mm -hmm. a skeptical parent? What is it? To put it very, very simply is a company subletting a property when they rent it out on short term stays or as an HMO room by room. So you rent it and then you rent it out for a higher <clears> amount. <throat> Why would the landlord not do that themselves? Some landlords just can't be bothered because quite a lot of landlords that I encounter are older, you know, especially in Cambridge, like they bought it decades ago, held on to it. It's now quadrupled in value. They just can't be bothered. So for example, my rent to rent company, we cover 200 pounds of maintenance a month. If 200 quids of maintenance happens with an agent, you'd also have all the fees on top of that. So lots of added up expenses. So for uh, landlords, it's ease really. Mm. How do you as some a teenager that's mm -hmm. working in Iceland get a landlord to actually trust you? And you've taken on several of the of these properties. Yep. Is it with the same landlord or different? Um, two with the same landlord, actually. Um, and obviously he trusted me enough to give me his second, which is good. Okay. But trust is really important because a property is, generally speaking, a person's biggest asset and they want it in good hands. Right. How do you get them to mm -hmm. trust you? So for, how do you get through referencing when you're at Iceland on 1200 pound a month and you're a teenager living at home? So firstly, you've got to present yourself well. Like don't don't give them reasons to be skeptical. If you're coming in like, uh, hello, my, my name is Ben. I'm actually 18 by the way, but I would like to rent your property. No chance. Right. Because you're giving them opportunities to to be against you. Mm -hmm. If you call them being confident, knowing your shit, not stuttering, which obviously takes time, they're not going to think you're any different to any of the other professionals in the property mm -hmm. industry. That's true. That's true. So I guess, I guess, yeah, they don't know how old you are. No. They don't know that you're living at home. And the only time I've been asked that is when I've initially brought up age. Then after that, you've got to know your business. You've got to know what you're providing and be confident because if you're not confident in your business why would anybody else be i know i can look after my landlord's properties i know i can look after my guests and that's a good enough reason for me for them to essentially invest in my business yeah that's that, that's, a, that's a good point how did you justify investing in yourself in the mm -hmm. training and the education again <laughs> as a teenager at Iceland, mm -hmm. how did you raise the finance and how did you justify that decision? Because of my grades, <laughs> I knew that university now wasn't an option. And so I wanted to stay in education and keep on learning because learning is one of the most important things in life. 
have to always be learning. Mm -hmm. And I, I had some money already and I thought I'd, I'd just go for it. I want to be trained properly if I'm going to do this properly. Because like I said earlier, some people saw it as just like a little hobby, a little project. Yeah. So if it's going to be more than a hobby and a project, i got to know my shit. I've got to be with people who also know their shit, which is why I joined the academy because I already had education before. But one of the big drivers for the academy was the network because mm -hmm. I just saw how many people were on it. And also the atmosphere as well. Because like you shout at people, it would be like just, shut up and just do it <laughs> and, and uh, obviously yeah. probably with some more swear words in there but i loved it because i've played rugby a lot of my life and i'm used to competition i love competition which is why i i join you on the boxing as well yeah which we'll talk about man that was sure. sick by the way sure, thank you me. won that fight i did yeah so it's fun okay and another thing is as well as i often say is mm -hmm. when you've invested heavily into yourself it makes you more investable. You've got experience, you've got knowledge, you've got education, you've got network, you've got deals, you've got a bit of credit over the last couple of big, years now. Big network, because I'm I'm now a lot heavier on social media. And there's, so my, my social media strategy is working quite well for raising JV Finance. And I base it on three principles. So it's being known, liked and trusted, right? So everything I put out, has to fall into those three categories or it's just pointless, mm -hmm. right? So being known is just the consistency of being on somebody's phone. Like I have to post X, X amount of times a week, otherwise people are gonna forget about me. I've got to always have these amount of stories up, otherwise people just not recognize me. So that's being known. Being trusted is giving people as much value as I can. Like I do like little like informative videos, I'll explain the deals, I'll say how people can do this better. That's being trusted because I'm showing that I, I know my shit. And then being liked, to be liked, you've got to be relatable. Somebody can't like you if they can't relate to you, which is why the way I come across on social media is just me. Like I'm not putting on the front, I'm not trying to be a, oh, I'm a businessman, blah, blah, blah. I'm just I'm just being me. Yeah. You know? And again, it goes back to when you're calling up landlords and agents and you've got the, the phone voice, kind of <laughs> super professional. Hello, I'm just ringing uh, from such a, such a company. And, and, and straight away, it sounds, as you said, it sounds like a sales call. And people yeah. generally don't like being sold to. So especially, you, especially in the UK. We yeah. hate it. It's a bit like not being sold to is ingrained in British culture. Yeah, like just so just so just ringing up yeah. and just being yourself. Yeah. Hey, it's Ben here. I'm just calling about such a property. Is it still yeah. available? And just just being chill, speaking as, as, as you are. And confident. That, that's very important. Yeah. So talk to me then about one of the biggest challenges that you've had. What's the What would you say the biggest struggle that you've had in your business has been? One big challenge I had was actually when I lost a deal. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> so I got an essay. I had an essay up in Liverpool. Right, it was it was really good. I was just for Eurovision as well, and they were renting out like a grand a night. So there's so much profit to be made for that. I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll jump on it. I got a JV partner for it. We bought the deal, and I went to set it up, but it was all very rushed, like really rushed. We woke up at eight, went to bed at like three, like every night, just just getting it done. It was crazy busy, but I I made the mistake of rushing the contract and not reading through it properly. So I painted the walls, I put wallpaper up, I, I drilled into the walls and I also put a lockbox on the outside of the building. But this was a block of flats, right? So you can't do that shit. And they just weren't having it. So I got, I got, I got kicked out of the flat. Why did that happen? Was it that you didn't communicate clearly enough with the landlord what you were doing and what the setup was? So it was through an agent. But the, yeah, like you said, the communication just wasn't there. Yeah. I, I wasn't asking the right questions and I was rushing. And the thing is as well, the only thing worse than no deal is a bad deal, yeah. right? Yeah. And a bad deal could be that the, the numbers don't stack. It could be that you've not communicated it properly and it, it's, you're going to end up wasting time because it's going to it's going to get put, it's going to fall through. Yeah. What did you learn from that? Don't rush. Be careful when it comes to taking on deals. And I think especially for people's, this wasn't my first deal, but I think for people's first deals, they're so excited to get going, they'll just take on any deal. Yeah. Even if the break even's like, I don't know, something crazy like 70%. They're like, oh, I'm sure we can get lots of bookings, so we'll take it anyway. Right. But 
you, you, you just lose money. Like yeah. in, in the winter, I was breaking even and losing, I think by 200 quids for both my studios. Like the winter was really slow mm. um, and quite a few people experienced it. How do you stop that happening then? How do you do your market research and determine whether a deal is going to be good or whether it's going to be bad? You've got two main aspects. You've got your location and you've got your customer. Generally speaking, pretty much all the cities in the UK can work for SA, but then you also have to look at how close it is to the city because, you know, closer to the city, the more demand it's going to get, mm -hmm. right? So the location has to be good enough for people to want to book there. Then you also have to look at who's booking. Am I getting yeah. professionals? Am I getting contractors? Am I getting families going on holiday? It's like people with, I don't know, properties on the Norfolk coast, they're going to be majority families going on holiday to the Norfolk coast. But whereas my, my studios, I get single professionals traveling or sometimes two professionals traveling together. Mm -hmm. And that will change your business model. Because firstly, you need to prepare and set up your property differently. Sure professionals are gonna want it looking very sleek and clean whereas yeah. families might like it a bit warmer a bit you yeah. know with, with kids stuff in you want to put a cot in there if exactly. you know your demographics in your family exactly. if it's going to be business you might want to put a little office desk in, in there exactly yeah so you've got to look at your location you've got to look at who's staying there and if the property doesn't work for that location and if you don't have that kind of guest visiting then don't take it what's your main area Cambridge. Cambridge is my area. Is it your only area? No, so I've got... You've been off Liverpool. Yeah. <laughs> You've yeah. been off Liverpool. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 funny enough, I've been offered deals in Liverpool and I was just like, no. I've got PTSD from that area. I'm not going back. Oh, jeez. <laughs> but I've got, I've actually got a deal in Plymouth, which is miles away, but that's a joint venture. And I've got a joint venture with the same people in Coventry, yeah. actually. How much money have you had to put into all these deals? Quite a bit. You Personally? yeah. yeah, yeah. Have you? Where did you get where are you getting this money? So from? I, I I had money. Um, I had some savings and just money sitting there for the deals. But for my own deals, I I think so far I've raised about twelve to fifteen k for my deals personally. So so what's the strategy then? Like okay, you say you had some 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 savings. Just a joint venture, everything. Because like for example, I've taken on my latest essay in Cambridge with my own money. So I don't want to start pushing out more into more deals. I, I, I want to have my personal safety pot so I'm not being financially stupid. And because of social media, I've got a decent pool of JVs I can go to. And my landlord, actually. So he, he's got a good job. He's obviously seen what I've done and he wants to make more money. Have you had any problems doing joint ventures where it's not yeah. worked out? Yeah. So with the Liverpool deal was actually a joint venture. Yeah. And obviously, if that was my own money, oh, fuck, I've just lost however much. But if it's somebody else's money, shit. Like, yeah, now you've got your real. money and your reputation. Yeah, exactly. And I, I care about my reputation. And he was ov obviously worried that he wasn't going to get his money back. I, I, was, I think it was seven eight k something like that mm -hmm. which for some people for most people is a lot of money and i made sure to pay him back every penny are you a member of pims i am does that help because a lot of the business i do is with academy members especially looking for deals so if anything goes wrong i've got a, that support which is good in terms of joint ventures how yeah. do you structure it in terms of do you have to have a joint venture contract? Like how are you structuring yeah. it so that it's win-win and it's safe for everybody? So we've got a joint venture agreement and I get a lot of people asking about JVs, obviously, because I look for them. They're like, oh, are we going to make a company? And for rent to rents I think the expense and the just the hassle of having an extra company for a property you don't own isn't worth it. Every time you do a J JV setting up a new it's pointless. It's pointless. Right. How do you do it? So there'll be three agreements. Me with the landlords. Yeah. So my company, Spinning Property Solutions, with the landlords. And then the joint venture agreement with me and you. Mm -hmm. and then we have a loan agreement as well. So the money's got to be got to be passed over somehow. Yeah. And that's the best way, in my opinion, to do that safely and securely. How difficult was it learning all of this stuff and getting your head around it? Was it was it really hard? Was it no? It's quite 
simple. It's just not easy. Mm-hmm. Well, like, like th- things can be simple and hard. Things can be easy and complicated, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. The stuff we learn for it, it is anybody can wrap their head head around it. Like, ju- just look at the academy. We've got sixteen year olds to eighty year olds from all all corners of the UK. Like anybody can learn it. It's just you need to put the time in to learn it. Mm-hmm. Like it, it's it's not hard when you get the basics down. Then you can start strategizing more. Like for example, with my essay stuff, I can then start looking at going direct to companies to try get a contract with them. So whenever they have people coming over, I'm their go-to for corporate accommodation. Yeah. Have you done the accelerated coaching performance program? I have. How was that? It's good. That was cool. It was fun. It was fun. It was, I, I can't remember exactly how long I got, but it was a good amount of time. You just rinsing me. <laughs> yeah, you just yeah. sit on the hot seat and we go yeah. around and rip you apart yeah. for half yeah, an hour. which which is brilliant. I mean, yeah. so some people might not like that, but like, you need to be able to take criticism to grow. And I thought being in the hot seat, just being rinsed by multi millionaires, was fucking awesome. Yeah. I loved it. And also being able to listen to other people's problems. Mm. I remember one of the guys we had; he didn't realize he was a property millionaire. Do do you remember that? They, it happens a lot. Yeah. Where people, yeah. Or they're, they're, they're a millionaire and they don't realise it. <laughs> yeah. And then we go through their net worth. Exactly. And they go, oh, oh, dang, I'm actually a millionaire. Yeah. How I old will. do you reckon you'll be by the time you're a millionaire? 20s. 20s is a bit vague though, bro. <laughs> yeah, like, that's like almost 10 years <laughs> away. Yeah. 29. Um, no, nah, I, think, I think I want to start buying next year. Yeah. I want to start because I'll have enough cash flow by then to start putting the profits into buying deals. And also I, I'll still be going for JVs so I can buy loads of places with JV finance. We use the same strategy of serviced accommodation, but you'll just buy. Potentially. I would like to do more developments. I think because I've got the experience, I think I could, instead of going up step by step, because you mm-hmm. know, you got you got rent to rent, you got buy to let, BRR, there's kind of stages of difficulty, right? Mm. I, I think I can go straight to developments and you don't even have to do the whole entire development. You can do planning gain. Yeah, and the thing is with those types of strategies mm-hmm. is they're slow. Yeah, and, and, and a lot of people, like I know that if somebody like you um, joined the academy mm-hmm. and I was mentoring you and you were 19 mm-hmm. and you said to me, I want to do property development. I want to buy stuff, flip stuff, yeah. get planning permission. <clears throat> I know that stuff. Yeah. It takes at least a year yeah, before you make a pound. It's like best case scenario. You'll yeah. make your first chunk of money in a year, more likely two years. Mm-hmm. So if you've got like an 18, 19 year old trying to do that and it's so slow yeah. and they're working in Iceland and they're yeah. having to be scared. Of, it's yeah. like, no, 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 let's just make some quick money now. Let's mm-hmm. just take them some quick rent to rent. Have you done any deal selling? I'm not a big fan of deal selling. You're not a big I fan think, of it. Yeah, I know. And Is that because you've not done it? I have. I've sold one deal. How much you <laughs> That was co-source. I think I made a grand for that. But I think if I'm going to put the time into finding deals, I may as well just keep them because I want to grow a portfolio. I want to grow cash flow. That's my aim. Yeah. Like some people do incredible in, in deal selling. So well, like some of the guys made like 30 grand in a month. Yeah. And you see that all it's the time. Crazy. It's, yeah. it's amazing. Yeah. But I would rather build the portfolio. So I've got tangible stuff to go off. I want but the cash, cash in the bank's pretty tangible though, bruv. That's very true. But That's very true. everyone's different. Yeah. And you've got to find a strategy that works for you. Yeah. What was it that drew you to rent to rent? And then what was, it, what was it that really excited you about that? It was controlling a property without owning it. It gives you a lot of power not having to put down 50, 80, 100K for a deposit, depending where you are in the country, but still getting the, the profits Yeah. as a normal homeowner would, right. property owner would. Yeah, because if you, how much on average would you say you make on a rent to rent? Between 700 and a grand. Right, which is yeah. more money per month than an average buy to let buy investor to let. would make. Yeah. So you'll make, the cash flow you're making mm-hmm. per property is actually quite high. Yeah. Albeit you don't own it, but you control it. And also I think that the experience that you get like the fact now that you've got so much experience with yeah. staging properties, doing market research, dealing with tenants, dealing with guests, dealing yeah. with contracts, and you're making money. How long was it before you quit Iceland? So I quit and then I got my rent to HMO. So that was my second deal. And, you know, I was living at home. My expenses were so small. 
technically it was full-time property with those two deals, right? And then I ended up losing the rent to HMO. Going down to one deal. Did you go back to Iceland? No. Oh, good. No, I, I, I've got too much ego for that. <laughs> imagine that. Like, imagine <laughs> going in Iceland and saying, I'm going into property investment. And everyone's like, oh, lol, let's see how you get on. Yeah, and then honestly. three months later, you come back, can I have a job again at Iceland? <laughs> if I make such a big deal to do something, to go into property full time, I, I can't fall back on myself. I've just got to bite the bullet. And that's the thing as well, isn't it? Like, once you've leveled up and you've hung around millionaires for a year yeah. and you've got some deals and you're making decent money, yeah. sure you're turning over maybe 16, 18 grand, but you're still making a few grand a month profit. Yeah. You've got your properties. You can never go back to Iceland. Nah, nah. And I think not only does your job and financial situation change, but your mentality changes as well. Right. Being, being surrounded by people that are so on their shit they're so motivated and smart about business being in any other environment is just odd yeah because i like i love going to networking events and just chatting about property because it's fun and we can relate to it but if i went back into a normal retail corporate environment i'd hate it yeah it's odd so the rest of your life is different as a result of property 100 percent, which is awesome. awesome what do you what do your family think of what you do now they like it now do that yeah because they were skeptical because I hadn't proven anything. Mm -hmm. At that point, before my first deal, it was just a thought. Mm -hmm. They didn't have any proof. The first deal, okay, maybe it's getting a bit more, it's, it's getting active, but it's not big. Yeah, but, but now I've got a portfolio. Now they see me go and view in million pound houses to do luxury SA. Yeah, with. and you're actually doing the deals. Yeah, yeah. You know oh, what? I'd love to come to one of your properties at some mm -hmm. point and do a video yeah. around one of your luxury houses mm -hmm. or apartments like that would be sick. Yeah. How many bedrooms is this latest one? Two. Oh, uh, the latest. I can't say. You can't say how many bedrooms it is. I, I'm on NDA. I can't I can't give too much. Is it man. is it more than seven? No. Oh, so it's not that big. It was big. <laughs> it's quite big. Is it? Yeah. Anyway, I'll come down and look at it. For Once sure, you sign on the sure. dotted line, and yeah. maybe do a YouTube video, go around it. Yeah. Is it proper luxury? You said you've got like an arcade in there and everything. One of the rooms is going to be fully games room. It's got a TV, so I'm going to add a PlayStation, put a project screen on, a few arcade machines. Nice. I was thinking maybe a poker table, but I don't know. Hmm. Biggest thing you learned over the last year, being on the academy, immersing yourself in everything. Biggest, biggest lesson. Two things. Firstly, talk to everyone. Networking is so important, whether it's for learning, raising finance, getting the deals itself. And secondly, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Right. Some people are afraid to do business because they're worried of failing. You only fail when you stop. I've made several mistakes. I've lost two deals. Set up periods go way over um, what I was planning on. Like, I've learned from a lot of mistakes. Have your parents put your board up yet? No. <laughs> oh, that, okay, now you're not going to want to do this interview now. <laughs> yeah, but to be fair, my mum does ab advertise my places on her, on her work. Oh, that's so, nice. Yeah, so she does. So she's probably supportive. Has your age held you back or has it helped you or has it just not, not, not made any difference? I, I don't think age matters. In a sense of the individual, it doesn't mean shit. You've got people, especially now, it's so easy to make money. Like you've got all the stuff online, you've got crypto. People became millionaires during the, you know, the big sure. crypto spike. Yeah, I would agree with that. And I don't think the marketplace discriminates. No. If you know what you're doing yep. and you're a professional yep. and you add value. 100%. And you're around the right people and you've got the right network and the right support, then you're good. And that's it. Money follows value. Right. Business is the exchange of value for money. So as, as long as you're on it and have something valuable to give, mm. it doesn't matter what race you are, what sexuality, what age, where you're from, you can live under a bridge, but if you've got something valuable, people can buy it mm -hmm. and you're gonna make money. Yes. And you're gonna move out of that bridge into a big old mansion. Oh wow, <laughs> we've got some proper metaphors and all sorts exactly. going on now. Exactly. Cool, well Ben, it's been a pleasure working with you, Thank bro. You, Thank you for coming on Winners on a Wednesday. Thank I you know you, you dreamed to come on the show, yeah. Did it live up to the expectations? Loved it. That's good. Respect, bro. Thank See you, you real soon. Appreciate that.